and that creates an access to invite this spirit to dwell within you. Jezebel's primary focus is power through achievements to excel and exalt itself with their narcissistic abilities. They will do whatever they can to be attached to someone who are in leadership and work their way to gain trust and harvest that sort of authority and decimate others with it and keeping them at an inferior level. They can also be jealous of someone's progress and growth. These spirits maneuver with deception to keep that rule of control in whatever they do, nothing is their fault. They can be seen in church, family, friendships, relationships, and in workplaces. In the book of Revelation, it is known to call herself a prophet. Key word here is call meaning they need attention. It's not about a gender. It's about an agenda. As I said before, it's about power and manipulation. Ask God for his Holy Spirit and you won't have to deal with this kind of evil. These kind of spirits can be sneaky. They act like snakes. They will watch your behavior from a distance, your weakness, they will study you from afar off. And then they will invade your territory. Even if it's online, they would just do it behind the screen. Um, keep record of these things and contact your local authority because this is considered to be harassment, bullying, and that is a crime. Um, it can be done through texting, um, social media platforms, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, um, emails, of course, and there's a way that you can screenshot anything that you have on your phone, whether it's a video or a picture, you can easily screenshot it. Some phones, like mine, um, you hold the power button and the down button at the same time, and it's like a flash that comes on your phone. But again, contact your local authorities, and there's a way that what they do is they will worm their way on in with ease just to bring you back or just to draw you back. And so they can manipulate you and you know have power over you and control you. Um, this is very serious, and we're going to discuss a lot more than this. God once said, and His words is everlasting. He said, "Do not touch my anointed, and do my prophets no harm." In layman terms, if God were to say those same things today in a way that we can definitely understand. All in one, he would just say, do not mess with my people. Uh, this goes for physical harm and verbal threats. spirit will fall and when it does it will be crushed you know I look at it as a girlfriend of Lucifer because they kind of act the same in scriptures it speaks about King Jehu Elijah Jezebel the Enoch's King Ahab and in that story you know you can read that Jezebel killed many prophets she was a thief she she robs the people's blessings 
she surrounded herself with Enoch's fruitless men who couldn't multiply but by a high calling they were able to throw her down sure enough she didn't even have a burial site because the only thing was left was her skull her feet and her hands Second, she was trampled under a horse. No one can survive that. And three, she was ripped apart by wild dogs. You know, God will expose these spirits and you will definitely be surprised that it has been working behind the scenes long enough within someone's life, or maybe even yours. Again, they're, they're assigned to you. It's not that you ask for it. It's just there was something in your life that created an, app, an open access for them to come in and invite themselves in and now they establish a home with you. But again, God will simply heal you and deliver you from this spirit. I'm going to share with you, well actually two experiences. Um, well one, is why it's important to treat someone the way that you want to be treated. And sometimes what God do is that he will actually allow someone to treat you the same way you're treating someone else. A couple of years ago, I was working at a I was working at a store, and I had a manager. She was a she was a nice lady. She was a really nice lady, and she would hound me down so much where I would get so irritated. She would page me in and like, hey, you know, where are you? What you doing? Where are you? Like whenever she didn't see me, I could be using the bathroom, and one time I was, and I just got irritated with it. But it just kept going on and on for some days. I'm like, you know, I'm about to quit. But then again, I needed the job. But it, it was just constantly hounding me down. I'm like, I didn't, I was, I didn't like that. Within those days, it's like, it's like God just put it on my heart, and it's like, this is the same way you're treating this person. And then I start to realize, like, if I don't like how she's treating me, this is my manager. And I'm pretty sure the person that I'm treating don't like it either. And I just, it's like I was just so sorrowful. I, I, I went back to that person, I apologized, I repented, I confessed. I, I just didn't do that again. And, and again, God will, sometimes God will allow someone to treat you the way that you're treating others just for you can change. I used to read about people's experiences as they share a glimpse of their previous relationship and how terrible it was. And I can say that reading is important, but their experiences was way too similar as others. And their result was a nightmare. They happened to marry someone and not knowing that all along that spirit was working behind the scene just to get close to you and destroy you.
Now we're gonna do a little wordplay here. Um, no, the worshipers of Baal, they tend to make sacrificial rituals. Um, sometimes you will see in pictures like, you know, the, um, the God of Moloch. Um, sometimes what they do is they will offer uh, babies to be burned as a sacrifice. Uh, with Baal, you gotta look at the word Baal. Um, you got, of course, Jezebel and her father, uh, Ithetobel. I believe that's how you pronounce the name, but it's Ithetobel the first. Um, Ithetobel actually means one that is with Baal. Um, as Baal being, well, I can say, a, a demonic being, that word actually consists of rebel. Uh, something like you're going back to Baal, like, you know, redoing or uh, um, rebel, rebel. So you see how the word like rebel, going back to Baal, then rebel. Uh, you, you also can get the word rebellion. The Hebrew word for rebellion is mari or mara. Rebellion also in Hebrew, that, that also means bitterness. And remember the Facebook status that I um, that I written. I kind of went back to like what I what I was writing. And I realized like you know it's, it's actually an open access. So one that becomes bitter, they invite this spirit of rebellion, Baal, back in, as in Jezebel, what she did. I'm going to speak on an experience um, concerning this. <sighs> this was a couple years ago, quite a long time. Um, I was during, it was during my broken moments uh, after a breakup of a relationship and I was really trying to seek my way back in but I became real close to someone online uh, they happened to actually find me on here uh, through Facebook, I'm sorry, through YouTube and they found me on Facebook and you know, I was kind of unsure about people because the last time I allowed someone to add me, it was just a bunch of nasty stuff that was on my page. So I kind of like put a stop to that and watch who I really add in. But me and this lady, we got real close. Like she was so cool. I mean, she was so smart, beautiful. Um, and she's very gifted, talented. We started talking about family, kids' names and stuff, and actually seeing each other. I mean, I was just playing along. It seemed so innocent, so good at first. And there was a moment where, there was a moment where I would feel as if I'm being pressured not by her, but whenever we start to like argue and things, it's like, it felt like so much pressure. It was like a spirit of heaviness was on me. And I tend to apologize for this individual's past as if I'm the one that did it. And I was just really being, you know, remorseful about it and it just showing kindness. But then again, I also get irritated because it's what happens so often. And it was like, it was like, it was as if it was my fault that I done something, I'm like, you know, I can't keep using that, you know, like, you know, you gotta like, see what's in front of you, you know, you can't blame me for your past, and especially every guy is not the same. But, you know, the days come in, it was okay. It was like having a deep, wasn't a relationship again, but it was like a deep friendship that we would talk very often. And, When things would come up in arguments, again, it was like it was always my fault. And I really didn't understand that. So I would like just leave it alone. I would just like take a break or just stop talking to her or whatever. And it's like I would just get bashed. Like, I, I mean, really bad. I would get cursed out sometimes. And again, I, maybe that's just some people's motives. Not as an evil intention trying to hurt you 
but again, I really didn't play it smart. So as we were just, you know, being cool, just having a normal conversation, it's like she was just simply just snap on me, and like I'm again, I'm like, you know, what, what did I do to deserve this? I didn't do anything. And it just kept happening over and over and over again. I'm like, you know, I just, just got kind of got tired of it, and I just just blocked it. That was it. When I did that, something hit me on my heart and says, Jezebel, and I'm like, okay. So I kind of did some research and I read the story a few times. And I'm like, oh my God, those same qualities reminded me of this person. And so I started to post things on Facebook just to create awareness about it because I've been reading people's testimonies and experiences on them apparently a little bit too late but I believe nothing is really too late especially if you're willing to change but they even engage or marry this person it's like now they're kind of like stuck with it and then after the breakup they feel so relieved knowing that this person was a, a narcissist and you know, a controlling or manipulator and I just kind of like got so much into it with this person. I just had to just back away from it because again, it's like once the argument starts up, I just feel so much pressure on my heart. Like it was like, if I were to stand reading it, I probably would have fell out. Like it was that powerful in a way that I couldn't handle it. And I just, sometimes I just stopped reading it because this, this ongoing rant, it was just so much drama. And I'm like, you know, I don't really need this. I'm trying to be patient and kind. It was too much. It was, it was too much for me to handle. So when I started looking into Jezebel, the story, I, I started posting just a few things, writing it like, hey, look, look at this qualities. And I just want other people to be aware that they don't need to deal with this. And if they see the signs early, you can do something about it. And she will come on to, def like, she will simply go in there and just write, like, defending herself, you know, like, this and this. And I'm like, this really necessarily wasn't for you, you know what I'm saying? So I blocked her, and then well, I did it again. I like, okay, maybe she's, maybe she understands, like, okay, you can't keep treating people like this. And I just unblocked it, and it's like, it kept happening over and over. And I'm like, you know, this, this, I'm done with this. So next thing you know, she decided to use other people in her family just to write me because I would block her page. So she would use maybe a certain family member. I'm like, and I had to block that. And then I had to block that. Like this was like maybe a couple years ago, like just, you know, whatever, last year, I guess. And then it, it kept happening. So I'm like, okay, you know, this really. So I simply had to just pray for her and I'm like kind of you know, relieved about it. And I kind of seen those characteristics and this was just through a screen. And I can just imagine I don't even, matter of fact, I don't even want to imagine how it could be in person. When I wrote that status that I just read to you, again, I wasn't thinking of nobody. I just, it was just on my heart to write it. She used another person's page just to write me. And I'm like, why do you keep targeting me? I didn't ask for that. So I blocked that again. It's, I mean, after so long, it makes it so weird because I realized that after all this many, all this time, that she was really just being an FBI, not a Federal Bureau of Investigation, not that, but a Facebook investigator. And I'm like, this is creepy. And I just, hey, whenever I think about that, like after it happened, it's like I was actually feel that same pressure on my heart again. And I'm like, this, it was, it was so, it was just so heavy. I had to, I prayed for a while. It was just powerful prayers for this person and for her and for me. And I had to just really be like, receive clarity because it was just, it was so horrifying. I didn't really want no parts of it. I just pray that the Holy Spirit just be upon her and everyone else who has this spirit. And for others who are, have been affected by it, they'll be set free. 
This is a moment of self-reflection and I ask that you think about these questions. Questions like this simply brings awareness. It exposes some dark things in your life that maybe you need to really work on or of course bring to God so he can do some spiritual surgery on you. And it just acts that you, if you want to just write these out yourself or you could, I don't want no answers. This is really not for me. This is for you. But just to answer these yourself, uh, just ask that you just take time and do so. So Jesus is in the business of healing. Um, you can read the first four Gospels in the New Testament, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and you can see that in the majority of Jesus' three and a half years ministry is that he was always healing people. He was delivering them. Like he was always setting the captives free. He was always bringing them to the light in life. It's the religious people that are bound and they use that demonic influence to keep others with them in chains. It's, the, it's, that the, it's the religious people that actually killed Jesus. Remember, Pharisees are religious people. Jesus was the one to distance himself from that and be one with the Father. The Pharisees really didn't have nothing nice to say about Jesus. Even when the truth came out, they were so, they was just gripped with anger towards him. Why is it that the truth eagerly angers people. Life is about being free, having the right motives, directed in a, in a positive manner, guided to life and righteousness. This is what Jesus wants for everyone, not to be held captive in a closet, not to be in a jail where everything around us is the same. He want us to, to be free. And that starts by receiving the truth. In a relational standpoint, be careful who you are attached to. I know that it is a natural affection to be attracted or attached to someone that you really have a liking for. But in all seriousness, get to know who they are. Get to know their, their qualities. Get, get to know their characteristics. You know, just really get to know who they are before you start to make it official. Concerning this Jezebelic, narcissistic people, remember it is not their fault. Just know that they can be delivered from it. It is not that they are doing it, it's the spirit behind it that has influenced them to spiritually rape people of their destiny and leaving them helpless and hopeless. It is possible that anyone who has a charismatic personality may be a threat to Jezebel. Speaking about Jezebel, it can irritate the spirit within someone because it works in darkness whenever the truth comes as a shining light that spirit becomes angry jezebel doesn't want to be humble it refuses to and it doesn't want to be exposed either but will quickly change the subject or at least manipulate their way to blame someone else so that they can remain high but i tell you the truth that greater is he who is in you than he who is in the world. Greater is Christ who is in you. Greater is God who is in you. Greater is the Holy Spirit that is within you than the enemy that is in this world. As I said before, it's never too late to change. It depends on your willingness. I'm very delighted to share with you my experience, share with you um, attributes of this character, of this spirit, I want all of you to be sure that you're going to be protected no matter what, but you have to be careful what you invite in your home and your heart. It displeases God knowing that when he sees his children not being free but held in spiritual chains. Sometimes we look at that as it being someone else's fault or their parents' fault or if it's a generational curse. If you know that you need help, 
Psalms 23, the Lord is my shepherd. And you know, with shepherds, they take care of their sheep. If you have a child and your child is crying, you're not gonna ignore your child. God will never ignore you. We need to seek help on these matters. We need to be ready to be delivered from it. You may not ask for the spirit. You may not know where it came from. Again, it looks for open access. It's, sometimes it can be generational where it just passed down along and along and along and it reaches you. And you, if you don't do nothing about it, you don't want it to reach your children. But I will pray for every last one of you as a whole, because we are all in this together. We may live in different places and locations, homes, just know that we are gonna be back with the Father, and He wants all of us united with Him. I hope what I said helped you, encouraged you to do something about it, to be watchful of others, not necessarily attacking them, but to really pray for these people because with Jezebel's, they look for, they seek power. And we know that Jezebel was attached to Ahab. Ahab became weak. She surrounded herself with Enoch's fruitless men, men that are weak. Side and throw her down. Without that call, those Enoch's would have been stuck. But they responded to a high calling. I love you all. Take care of yourself.